Okay, so this is perhaps one of the more exciting, but the more uh, problematic areas of using microbit, and that is uh, making things move. Now, um, it's one of those things that the students will always want to do. It's exciting to be able to make creations that can move, but it also does present some challenges that I would suggest um, teachers should spend some time learning the issues with some of these things before they start um, trying to do it straight away with the students. And we'll go over those um, during the session, try and identify what some of the problem areas are that you might encounter along the way, and look at a whole variety of different things. So we're going to have a look at, during this video, we're going to look at simple, simple motors, just turn around motors. We're going to look at a geared motor. So this is a motor with a lot more power than this, um, but also is going to need uh, more power giving to it. So we'll talk about how we would do that um, during this one. We're going to then look at two different kinds of servos. So um, rotational servos and continuous servos and the difference between those and what they do. Um, so there's going to be quite a lot of things in this um, video, but hopefully it'll be helpful to try and uh, iron out some of those problems with, uh, with making things move. So. Um, Let's begin with the simplest. So let's just start with uh, just a normal straight round motor. So going to the uh, computer here, just going to call this one motor. Now the bit of code that we're going to use for this uh, should be very familiar because we're just going to use exactly the same as we did for the single LED. So we are just going to switch on pin zero when we press A, and when we press B, we're going to switch off pin zero. Okay, so this was the same as we did for the single LED when we looked at that one. Digital right pin zero, pin zero is where we're going to connect our motor, so pin zero to ground, so that's it's going to sit in the middle between those two. Um, and then when we press B, it's going to turn that off. Um, and we can see our program, something's happening here. But again, as I said on the LED one, it doesn't know what we've got connected there. So uh, I'm going to connect this to the micro bit. Just make sure that we're paired. Okay, so we're paired up there. And download the program then onto the micro bit. Okay, so next step is then going to be to connect this to the motor. So as I said, it's just on pin zero and ground. So let's wire these two up. Okay, let's press button A and round it spins and press button B and it stops. Now, it is pretty weak. Um, you can hardly feel anything coming off it. And the reason for this is also the, the problem with using some of these other um, motors, that what comes out of the micro bit in terms of power is good enough to light up a few LEDs. Um, it's good enough to just about make this motor move, but it, the current is really low. So you might have three volts, but you've got, you've got three volts that's really quite low power. Um, so what we would need to do if we want to power anything more than this, then we're going to need, um, for the most part, another way of powering it. Now, with some of these servos, you can just about power them off the micro bits uh, built in three volts, because there is a slightly more powerful three volts on here. Um, but it's not always that reliable. We will try and we'll see hopefully, and hopefully we'll have some problems so we can see that as we go. Um, but before we move on to the servos, um, let me press B, stop that one. I want to look at this motor here. So this is a much more powerful motor you might use if you're making model cars and things like that. Now, there is no way of getting this moving to any degree of usefulness, getting it moving just uh, on the micro bit like this. So what we're going to have to do to get this one going is I'm going to use this, which is a motor driver board. Now. Uh, what this one does, it's got two little spots here for putting our motors in. So there's some little screw holes here we can plug in our motors to on this board. Um, also, it's got a power input here, 
that will take anything between 6 and 12 volts. So that's a lot more powerful than your normal little battery pack. So actually what we're going to put this one on here is a 9 volt battery. And this will also power the micro bit, so there's no need for any external power for the micro bit. That is going to be it, so we plug that in. We put the power in to here as well, and then we should be good to go. So let me connect this one up. It's already switched on, so we're seeing it light up. Let's just loosen that one a bit more. Okay, they're nice and tight. Okay, so actually the light's on there. This board has a power on and off just here as well. Um, so what we can do then is that we can put this, so we've actually got two motors on this board, motor one and motor two. So I'm just going to put this into motor one. Now these are motors that are exactly the same. These are actually straight from our make block robotics. So if you use make block in the school, it's just a couple of jumper wires then into there. Okay, so uh, I'll put a wheel on that as well. Got a little clip on wheel that goes with it just here. So what we need to do now then is that we're going to code this um, to do something uh, with this motor. So back over onto the computer uh, I'm just going to ditch these. Actually, I will ditch those and I will keep the other bits. Now, uh, what we're going to do for this, you could do this with pins. You could try and do it with pins and, and work it out. But actually, there's an extension for these boards. So this one here is a motor bit, which is just there. So we'll click on the motor bit. And that now is going to give us in a moment, there we go, motor bit as an extra piece. So um, basically, this works uh, from a left wheel, right wheel, um, which is not the most helpful way of putting these things down because you don't know whether motor one is left or right. It doesn't specify that on it. So what I would do is just use move forward, which is going to move both motor one and motor two. I've got it connected to motor one. So your speed here goes up on a scale up to 100. Um, so you can work it out from there. And then what we will have then, break. There's a great, uh, a great option there. So, all right, so we've got these two pieces here. Uh, we're going to connect up this micro bit. Pair the device. Oh, claims it's already paired and download it. Okay, so download completed on there. So let's make sure our stuff is all on. The batteries are on. This is not on, it is now. Uh, let's now press button A and off it goes at high speed. Um, and that has a lot, yeah, a lot of power in it um, coming from there. And then B is our brake button there. And that one then goes. So. If you were looking to power, obviously I can take it off the USB at this point. So now we've got quite a nice piece if you were trying to build something with a lot stronger motors or a car or something like that. Um, then we've got that here um, now ready to use. So really useful little boards, these uh, motor driver boards. If you really want to do power, proper powering proper motors, then uh, you would need something like this to be able to do it. So uh, that's a more powerful motor, and that works great. 
So what I'm going to look at next is to start looking at servos. So um, let's move this lot over to the side for a moment. Now, um, there's two, two kinds of servos that we've got here. So this one is a continuous servo. What this one does is that it goes round and round and round. So you would control this one in terms of speed in a direction uh, for a period of time. Okay, and that would then go for that long in that direction. It could stop and it could go the other way. And so this would work great for something like a lift system. If you wanted a pulley with a lift that goes up and down, this would work good for that. Um, this one is a rotational servo. So this one it only goes to 180 degrees and it basically moves to an angle. So you would set an actual angle you want it to move to and then it would move to that angle and then you could move it back to zero if you wanted to come back again. So more if you want something that is articulated, uh, like a waving arm or a lifting thing or something that just moves um, on a range of zero to 180 degrees, then we would use this one. So we're going to look at both of them um, and how we would use them uh, and the code that goes with them as well. So uh, back over to the computer. So we'll start out a new project for this one. Um, I'll just call this one servos. And um, OK, so there are some built in servo pieces here um, under the pins bit, but they're not the easiest for the kids to use. So generally, if you go to the extensions and choose this servo library, you can search for it if you can't see it. So choosing this one is by far the best because what you've got here now is a nice simple for positional, the rotational positional servos, and for continuous servos. So you've got some pieces for that too. So they're, they're both dead easy. So let's start with the continuous servo. So uh, this one, as I say, will just go round and round. Um, at a certain speed. So let's drop these. Let's put it just on a button A. And then I'm just going to duplicate the whole thing. And let's have it on button B to go uh, minus 50. So that's going to be reverse. And what I will do then is just do a button A plus B. So both of them together to stop the servo. Now you get a rough idea from the simulator here that if we press A, it's going that way. If we press B, it's going that way. Uh, a and B should stop it. For some reason on the simulator, it just doesn't work, but it will work on the real micro bit. So um, what we're going to do then is that we're going to download and copy this onto the micro bit. So let's download it. Okay, so that's copied onto this micro bit. Now we're going to use um, just on the little basic bit board to connect this up. As I say, you can connect this directly to the pins. Um, it's a little bit fiddly um, and you end up with wires everywhere. So any kind of breakout board is, is usually the best for doing um, stuff with servos. So, okay, so this one is now connected here. So if we press A, it's going that way. B, it's going that way and A and B together is going to stop. Um, so positional servos, the difference between this and the motor, obviously the speed, um, these have a little bit more torque in them for um, if you want to do something like lifting, something like that, building a pulley system, whatever. Um, these will work great for that. We also use them um, to create these. So these are continuous servos that we have uh, that turn the rotational movement into linear. So these are what's called a linear actuator. Uh, and we 3D print these um, to be able to um, make models with uh, something that moves forwards and backwards on them. Um, I'll drop the link to this one to the 3D files um, in the description below the video. Um, so continuous servos, as I say, will work okay. Now, if we take it off the USB power, interestingly, so just onto the battery, this will work. These servos were bought in particular because they work well at three volts, um, which is what these are. But you'll notice it's slower. Um, it doesn't have as much power when it's going in this. And when the batteries are not fresh, it will not work well at all. So um, 
Doing it on just the normal battery pack is workable, but not ideal. So if you find students where it's not moving well, um, just generally doesn't seem to be working good, it could well be the power worth changing to fresh batteries um, to try and improve that. I'll show you what we do apart from this with the next one. Um, if we have any troubles with the uh, the positional rotational servo. So back to the computer then. Uh, okay, let's take out all of these continuous servo pieces. And this time we're going to set uh, an angle on the other type of servo. So if we press button A, it's going to go to 90 degrees. It's going to go to zero when we press B. Um, and then if we do, let's do a little sequence on this one. Now, it'll only move, so it does move on to the next command even though it's not necessarily reached. So let's put uh, two seconds in there. That'll do actually. So let's have that go backwards and forwards. Okay, so let's connect the USB. We're going to download this one. Pair it first. Okay. Okay, and we're going to swap for the other servo for this one. Okay, so let's try. Oh, there we go. Sorry. So we've got A goes to there, B goes to there, A and B together. Okay, so that will then move and then move back on its own, uh, or we can move it ourselves just like that. Um, and these will go up to about 180 degrees um, on here, and obviously you can attach different things to it. Again, you can have the same thing, you take it off the USB power, that one's going okay. This one is rated for three volts, um, so should be okay on there. What we do though, if we do have problems with um, with using these, then sometimes we will resort to something like this. So this breakout board actually has a little step up um, converter here from three volts to five volts. So these are really good for running servos, particularly for running these. Um, so we will usually connect to these sort of breakout boards. It's the octopus bit board again i'll put the link in the in the video description um, to get these ones but uh, these are quite inexpensive pieces uh, to be able to put on so um, hopefully that's useful in terms of both servos and motors um, how we can use them what we can do with the basic sort of components and which bits we might need some extra little bits of hardware to help and um, just to make it easier for the students to be able to use um, so yeah i hope that was helpful